And we bless your holy name. In the name of Jesus. We give you all the glory tonight. We give you all the praise tonight. We give you all the adoration. In the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for such an opportunity, O oh God. To dig deeper into your word. We ask that let revelation be our portion tonight. In the name of Jesus, bring illumination. The illumination that brings about transformation. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, O God, that you are faithful. And we bless you for your word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. It's, it's good to see you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And uh, we thank God for uh, our in-depth study of the book of Acts. Hallelujah. And uh, I, I believe strongly that you will be blessed. Amen. I believe strongly that uh, you, you will be blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We, 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 started, we started dealing with um, the book of uh, the Acts of the Apostles. Hallelujah. We, we, we said that Acts was written by a guy whose name was Luke. Hallelujah. Luke was one of those first Gentile Christians. Hallelujah. Luke, Luke was the same guy who wrote the book of Luke, the gospel of Luke. And Luke was not with Christ, but he managed to gather credible evidence that pointed to the ministry of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Events during his time. Hallelujah. And also things that happened after his resurrection and ascension. Hallelujah. Uh, we saw how Jesus Christ showed himself to the disciples for 40 days after he was resurrected. And he did that to substantiate the fact that the grave could not hold him. Hallelujah. The grave could not what, hold him. That the prophecy that David said concerning him that he will be resurrected and he will be seated on the right hand side of the father was true. Hallelujah. The, the, the apostles by then were what, living in number after Judas committed suicide. And they had to replace Judas with uh, Matthias. And then we realized that before Jesus Christ ascended, he gave them specific instructions concerning the gift of the Holy Spirit. And uh, he asked them to go and wait in what? In Jerusalem. And you would ask yourself, why Jerusalem? Jerusalem was one of the places that he was resisted. Jerusalem was the very city that did not uh, want to what, uh, uh, believe his ministry. As a matter of fact, Jerusalem was the city of opposition. They opposed him because that was where the, the Jewish leaders had their counsel. They did not want to have anything to do with him. They called him all manner of names. And that was the same place that he was uh, sentenced and, what, and crucified. And so Jesus Christ sent the disciples to the same Jerusalem to wait for the promise of the Holy Spirit. And after 10 days, after his ascension, the Spirit of, the, uh, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, the promise came upon them mightily. And they began to, they began to witness to uh, the people in Jerusalem. You would realize that the event of Pentecost took place when there were a lot of people from all manner of nations. When you study Acts chapter 2, people had come from almost everywhere. I mean, Jews, proselytes, uh, Gentiles, all the people had come from what? from all over the nations, and they were gathered in Jerusalem for the Feast of Pentecost to celebrate it. And in the midst of the gathering, that was when God, what? God dropped the Holy Spirit. And 
there was a sign that accompanied what? His coming. There was a noise. They began to speak in other tongues for people to what? To, to see. God will always want to register something in the midst of what? Uh, uh, unbelievers, believers alike. He did it for them to realize that that which was said about the ministry of Jesus Christ, the promise of the Holy Spirit was true. And when the people began to ask among themselves, what is this that we see? That gave Peter the opportunity to begin to what? Begin to what? Witness to them about the person of Jesus Christ. Like we said earlier on, a lot of people knew that he was crucified. But a lot also did not know that he was resurrected from the dead. Hallelujah. And so Jesus Christ, through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, gave the apostles the opportunity to witness about what? His resurrection and his, what? his ascension. Hallelujah. Very, very important. The gospel of the kingdom, when we talk about the gospel of the kingdom, the, the message of the kingdom, it all centers around the person of Jesus Christ and his resurrection from the dead. When we want to talk about the message of the kingdom, it is about Jesus Christ, his ministry here on earth, his crucifixion, his resurrection. Hallelujah. And his redemptive work. His redemptive plan for humanity. You will realize that no other means, whether the shedding of blood of goats, what goats, bulls, whatever, was able to redeem what man. It was only the perfect sacrifice of the person of Jesus Christ. Because you realize that you realize that when man sinned, God has been sacrificing the blood of animals to redeem man. But none of it was perfect. None. None of those was perfect. The only perfect sacrifice was the person of Jesus Christ who was sinless because each and every man had what? Each and everybody has what? Iniquity in their blood. It will take the blood that is pure. It will take somebody that is without sin to redeem human beings. And so that was why God had to bring in Jesus Christ through the virgin word, Mary. And you realize that even in science, when a baby is dropped in the womb, the mother's blood does not what? Mix with the what? The baby's blood. The mother's blood does not what? Mix with what? The only place, whatever thing that the baby gets from the mother is nourishment. And it is through the placenta. And so when Jesus Christ was dropped in the womb, Mary's blood did not have any communication with the baby. Other than that, the blood that who he will share will be what? Will be mixed blood. The blood of what? The iniquity of Mary and that of God. Mixture. And that, that is not allowed. And so it took the perfect sacrifice, a pure blood, to redeem human beings. And that was the blood of Jesus Christ. That is, why, that is why the mystery of the blood of Jesus Christ and the revelation behind the blood of Jesus Christ is so important. It was not contaminated. It has no iniquity. It was blood from the throne. Hallelujah. It was blood created by God. There was no mixture. It was what? Perfect what? Blood. That was the only blood that could atone for the sin of man. Because for all have sinned, including Abraham, hallelujah, including anybody that you can mention of, hallelujah. And the only blood that could atone for the sins of man was a blood that was pure, without blemish, there was nothing in it, it was pure. That was the only blood that could atone for the sin of man. And so it gave Peter the opportunity, it gave Peter the opportunity to what? To witness Hallelujah. And we said that the opportunity came because Jesus Christ had told Peter in the book of Matthew chapter 16 that I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Hallelujah. And the keys of the kingdom 
was what? The, the authority in the name of Jesus Christ, the revelation of the person of Jesus Christ, hallelujah. The authority, the revelation, the understanding of the scriptures, hallelujah. That was the keys that was given to who? To Peter, hallelujah. And Peter used that key to open the what? The doors of the kingdom. And the people who believed the message that he preached, they were what? They were welcomed to become what? Part of the children of what? Of the kingdom. And the Bible said that when they saw what was happening and their hearts were opening, the Bible said that they began to what? Meet in places what? Sharing their meals. Hallelujah. They were having fellowship together. Hallelujah. This is what the church culture is all about. Hallelujah. The people were with one heart. Hallelujah. It, it, is, it is in vain. Okay, it is in vain if we will gather together as a church and where there is no unity. It is in vain. It is in vain for us to gather without what? Understanding. It is in vain for us to gather without love. It is in vain for us to gather without unity. It is in vain. It is in vain. The people were united, one heart, one mind. Hallelujah. The, you see, one thing, one thing about the kingdom, one thing about the church is the element of unity. If there is unity, if, if there is unity in the church, because Jesus Christ said something. He said, the world will know that you are mine when you are all one. One. One body, one baptism, one spirit. So everything borders around the spirit of what? Unity. That was why the Bible said that, and on the day of Pentecost, they were all gathered in one place with what? One accord. Hallelujah. Unity in the spirit. Hallelujah. When, when we are united in the spirit, it is very easy for, for us to be empowered by the same spirit. When, when we are united in the spirit on one accord, it is very easy for us to become what? Empowered by what? By the same spirit. Where there is division, we, we will never be empowered to the fullest. Because the spirit of Christ is the spirit of what? Is the spirit of unity. The spirit of Christ is the spirit of what? Of unity. And the Bible said that when, when they began to what? When they began to meet in the homes, they shared everything that was what? Uh, uh, they had everything in common. They shared everything amongst themselves. It was the drive of the spirit of what? Of unity. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 3. Thank you, Jesus. Acts chapter 3, verse 1. Acts chapter 3. The Bible reads... Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the, what, being the ninth what, hour, at the hour of prayer. One of the things that characterizes the New Testament church was what? Was their commitment and their what? And their dedication to what? To prayer. They, they, they were so dedicated and committed to prayer because, you see, it was something that they learned from who? From Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, their master, was a, a man of prayer. The Bible said that even before morning, he would separate himself. Hallelujah. He would separate himself from what? The twelve, and he would seek the Lord alone by himself. You would realize that his coming was what? Was birthed by prayer. Uh, it took Anna, Simeon, those elderly men and women, to, to, to pray for the manifestation of the promise. That which was promised Israel, their Messiah. People fasted. The Bible said that Anna and Simeon, in the book of Luke chapter 1, the Bible said that, and they gave themselves to fastings and what? And prayer are waiting for the consolation of Israel and the promise of the Messiah. And you will realize that he came through prayer. 
And when Jesus Christ was leaving this earth, in the garden of Gethsemane, he exited through prayer. It got so difficult in Gethsemane that he nearly gave up. But prayer alone was able to what? With the ministry of angels, was able to push him through that what? That opposition so that he would go to the cross. Because, you see, the, uh, Satan would do anything to stop you from coming into the place of promise. Satan would do everything to stop you from coming into the place of manifestation. But one of the things that I've come to realize is that prayer is our chief weapon. Hallelujah. By prayer, we are able to what? We are able to press through. A lot of people give up in the church because they don't know how to pray. And one of the benefits of prayer is that your inner man becomes what? Strengthened. Hallelujah. When your inner man is strengthened, it doesn't matter what is going on around you. Because your inner man is strengthened, child of God, you are able to hold on and to believe God to the end. Hallelujah. And these ones, when you study the Bible, in the book of Acts chapter 3, and even in Acts chapter 1, when they went in Jerusalem, they, they tarried in prayer. Hallelujah. In Acts chapter 2, they were still in prayer. In Acts chapter 3, these guys were still what? Visiting the temple and they did not even miss the hour of prayer. In Acts chapter 5, they prayed. Hallelujah. In Acts chapter 9, Peter gave himself to prayer before some people were sent from the house of Cornelius on the rooftop. The Bible said he went to pray. When Paul and Silas were arrested in, in, into the prison in Philippi, in the midnight, the Bible said that, and they prayed, and the prison was what? Shaken. You realize that prayer was one of their weapons. Hallelujah. And you see, any child of God that hates prayer, what you are doing to yourself is that very soon, you will be overtaken by what? Temptation. And you will fall. I'm not prophesying doom. I'm telling you what I know. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm telling you exactly what I know. Because you realize that one of the things Jesus Christ told them was that he said, pray that ye enter not into what? Into temptation. Je Jesus Christ did not say, wait. And when the temptation come, what? You pray. He said, he said what? Pray so that what? Ye enter not into what? Into temptation. And so prayer equips you. Hallelujah. Prayer empowers you. Prayer makes you what? Sensitive. Hallelujah. To the workings of the enemy. A, 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 a praying man. A praying man. A praying man is strengthened by his spirit. Anybody that prays. When the, when the devil comes with everything. You know that you are not ignorant about what? The devil's devices. If, if you don't pray, you are planning to fail. Amen. And you are planning to fall. Amen. This flesh loves sin. Hallelujah. <laughs> this flesh loves sin. But when you are, when you are prayed up, when you are praying, I will, I, will, I will show you the reason why Paul said that what I want to do, I cannot do. And what, what I do not want to do, that is what I do. It is, it is, it is in the DNA. Every, every man here on this earth, once in a time, has gone through that before. Sometimes you want to pray. Your spirit wants to play, pray. And you want to sleep. <laughs> Sometimes you vow not to eat that chocolate chip cookie ice cream. And you find yourself eating it. Hallelujah. Amen. You declare war on soda. And one Sunday afternoon you find yourself drinking it. Amen. It, is, it is something in our DNA. The, the sin nature. But you see, when Jesus Christ paid the price on the cross. You see, 
He, he through the spirit empowered us to be able to what? Subdue the carnal nature and live like him. And so if, if you are a child of God and you don't pray and you don't have a disciplined prayer life, it is very easy to fall. You will realize that the times that you fall into temptation big time is when you've, you've what? You've let go of prayer. Because at that very time, it is not your spirit leading you. It is the flesh. And Peter and John were heading towards the temple at the hour of what? Of prayer. They were disciplined. Hallelujah. They never missed the hour of prayer. They were there. And the Bible said that, and a certain man, verse 2, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called, what, beautiful, to ask for arms of them that entered into the temple. These guys were on their way to the temple to pray. Okay? And there was a guy, there was a guy who the Bible labels as what? Lame from the womb. Hallelujah. In other words, he was born what? Lame. Okay? He was born what? Lame. And this guy was always positioned at the temple gate. And the, 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 the gate was called what? Beautiful. Irrespective of how beautiful the place was, this guy never had any healing. And I always say that it is not about the beauty of the building. It is about the power of God in the place that matters. Hallelujah. It is not about the decorations. It is not about the silverware. It is not about the disco light. It is not about the smoke from the ground. These days, church has become so 21st centuryized. Where there is smoke from the grounds and everything and big screen TVs, which are all good. I love those things. But you see, you cannot substitute elegance and, uh, and all those things for the power of God. And so this guy has been at the temple. You see, that was why Jesus Christ was so angry with the Pharisees what, and the Sadducees. Those who opposed his ministry. Because you see, when he came, he had something that they needed. Because you realize that when, when people believed in Jesus Christ and they became his followers, the Bible said that he sent them out what, two in two and he gave them what? Power to preach the gospel, to heal the sick, and to cast out what? Demons. Okay? And this, what, this was what he knew very well that the Jewish nation needed. The power of the spirit. But they were so much caught into what? Into tradition. Jesus Christ would enter into a temple and people were demon possessed and the power of God would be released, hallelujah, and people would be set free. And the Pharisees and the Sadducees would become very jealous because, you see, Jesus Christ is always doing something new, hallelujah. God is always what, doing what, something new. This guy was at, lame from his mother's womb. When you study other versions of the Bible, they, they categorize this man's age around 40 years. So he's been begging for 40 years at this beautiful place. Begging for 40 years at this what? At this, at this gate called beautiful. But the Bible said that Peter and John met this guy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, who seen Peter and John about to enter into the temple asked for what? Arms. The guy was a beggar. He wanted some hand out. Hallelujah. He was looking. He, he was expecting to receive what? Something. The Bible says, and Peter, fastening his eyes upon him, with John said, look on us. They realized the guy was looking for something. And, and Peter told the guy, together with John, he said, look upon us. What, what they tried to do was that they tried to get the guy's what? Attention. They tried to what? 
they tried to get the guy's what? Attention. Hallelujah. And you see, child of God, it is very, very important in the days that we live in that God's word gets what? Our what? Our full what? Attention. Some of the things that we go through, it is God trying to what? To get our what? Attention. You see, we live in a, in a stressful era. Everything is very stressful. Hallelujah. Because of the way the world is rolling. Hallelujah. Everything is stressful. If you are not even very careful, you will even insult people who are trying to do you good. Because there, there's, there's so much stress around. Sometimes you don't even want to answer your phone, your phones. Sometimes you turn your phone off. You don't want anybody to bother you and everything. It is the cosmic war in the spirit realm. And you will realize that anytime God gets our attention and our eyes is focused on him, that is where God begins to what, do that which he wants to do. Hallelujah. When you, when you study the Bible, when, when God was about to use Moses to deliver the children of Israel from Egypt, the Bible said that Moses was looking after what? His father in law. We thank you for watching this broadcast. And we want to take this opportunity to invite you to fellowship with us. We are located at 3745 Wake Forest Road off Highway 98 in Durham, North Carolina, 27703. Our service hours are as follows. Thursday Bible study from 7 to 8.15 p.m. Friday night prayer from 8 to 10 p.m. And our Sunday worship service from 9.30 to 11.45 a.m. For more info, please call us at 919-638-1153 or visit us at www.eagleministries.org. Once again, thank you and may the Lord richly bless you. Be strong.